This is Stone Academy Phlebotomy Chapter 1. Uh, this is the lesson plan. So every chapter will have uh, outline, that's a summary of each chapter, objectives, which is the expected goal of knowledge that I want you to learn, key terms, specific definitions, the scenario as to what would you do, I would want you to answer that, review questions, we will go over on Zoom, and then you will have your multiple choice, uh, that will be required of you and the chapter review is very important because it actually sums up the chapter in a way that you can actually answer the multiple choice questions. So let's get started. So the first book we will work in is Phlebotomy Work Text and Procedures Manual which is the very first book listed in phlebotomy textbooks. After this chapter is read and completed, you should be able to define phlebotomy, list at least five job skills, describe the major duty of the phlebotomist in the role, uh, list six personality qualifications, um, also uh, differentiate what is accreditation versus certification, identify professional organizations with the interest in phlebotomy, and explain informed consent versus implied consent, confidentiality, and legal issues with the phlebotomist. The history of phlebotomy actually dates back to Egyptian times, the era when a lot of medical discoveries were made, including surgery and diabetes. Um, the actual word phlebotomy comes from the Greek term phlebo and tomi, so phlebo means veins and tummy means to make an incision. In more recent uh, times, there was something called bloodletting in which um, they used actual barbershops. That's where the term barbershop actually was made. And the red and white stripes uh, signified blood and safety. So that's where you get the red and white stripes as of today. Uh, the reason why bloodletting was done is because something called polycythemia, which was not termed in that time, but however, it's the production of excessive red blood cells, which can actually lead to death, uh, multiple organ failure. So the process was to uh, actually let some of that blood out and a cool fact, kind of, is that George Washington actually um, died because of excessive bloodletting. So the phlebotomist plays a really important role. You have to get the blood. You're not a phlebotomist if you do not get the blood. So that is first and foremost. It also helps the doctor diagnose, monitor, and treat therapeutic procedures. So it is a very important role in the healthcare uh, of a patient. Your other important roles is to, of course, identify the patient accurately and to maintain confidentiality, to know your equipment, treat the patient fairly like you would want to be treated. Also, safety, processing, and transporting is something that is a major importance as your role as a phlebotomist. One of the main job duties is to have interpersonal skills. We must learn how to leave our problems wherever they were before you entered the job. Um, everyone has troubles, even the person that's sitting in front of you. Uh, we got to realize also we're bringing a needle to the table. So we're coming at them with a needle and then also you may have a bad attitude. That is a horrible experience. Uh, so we want to make sure that we treat the person again like we want to be treated. And we also realize that they're sitting in that chair for a reason. Obviously the doctor wants to rule out something and that something could be pretty uh, detrimental to their health. Uh, a requisition form is actually um, from the doctor or the charge nurse. It has to be an order from the doctor. 
uh, but a charge nurse can write it up and uh, that could be an LVN or, or an RN. Um, on that requisition, it will let you know what you need to draw. A lot of times it will tell you what type of tube to draw. If you're unsure about the type of tube, you can always call your lab. They are always a point of reference uh, so you don't draw too many tubes and take too many too much blood uh, but also be able to transport and process properly. Here's an example of a Quest diagnostic requisition form. Uh, we will get into this later on in another chapter. Positive personal characteristics is a must. We expect that in Stone Academy we will not take anything less um, because you are representing yourself but you're also representing us and we will not graduate anybody that doesn't have these attributes. Again in regards to our uh, class um, personal characteristics is key uh, dependability positive attitude uh, so we expect for you to attend the Zoom meeting or to do your quizzes when expected, all the different requirements, if not that's considered an absence, uh, and the, we do not, per law, TWC Career School College Law, we cannot make up that much time. So uh, you may have to attend the next session if you cannot complete the tasks on time. Other attributes include empathy and compassion. So you always want to be more empathetic. That means that you put yourself into their shoes. However, there is another aspect that you don't want to be too attached that you cannot perform your job accurately or support the patient. Appearance. You must always have your clothes pressed. There is nothing like uh, a crisp, clean, uniform that makes you look so professional uh, and also you don't want to wear dangly earrings or excessive makeup uh, tattoos most places will want you to cover them up they do have those sleeves that are half sleeves especially if you get uh, you're you're the type of person that gets warm um, uh, then you can have the what they call false sleeves that you can use you will be expected to answer the phone and also you will be talking to the doctor like when I teach my CNAs um, CNAs do not take orders uh, from the doctor that has to be a nurse but when you are a phlebotomist you will always have to report lab results especially if it's a stat meaning uh, short turnaround time or ASAP um, and you're going to have to have telephone skills um, on uh, page 5, chapter 1, uh, box 1-1, one one, I want you to complete that uh, assignment, which includes a, a role playing of a phone call. When taking orders from a doctor, you want to make sure you get their name, uh, their phone number, and I mean their complete name, not just Dr. Ward. You have to get their complete name and if there's a middle name because they there can be several doctors under that name uh, again their phone number and accurate uh, information as far as the doctor's order always get a date and time in which you talk to the physician and you can get an order from a nurse practitioner or a physician's assistant or a DO. A DO is really no different from an MD. They just do things more in a homeopathic way, meaning they treat in a more natural way. But they still go to school the same amount of time, and if they have a specialty, they even went to school longer. The differences between accreditation, certifications, and licenses in regards to phlebotomy is that you will be certified by NHA, which is the National Healthcare Association that we go through uh, after you finish and complete, uh, graduate successfully and take the test successfully, you will be a nationally certified phlebotomist. The accreditation uh, is for actually NHA, 
uh, the uh, agency that you will be certified through. So our agency again is NHA and they are accredited by NAACLS. When it comes to licenses, um, there are a few states that require that, so you would be a licensed phlebotomist. Um, that is Washington, California.